Good morning and welcome again to the GDFL Footy Show coming to you out of Geelong on a very cold Saturday morning. And it's not July, it's definitely August, as I said last week when I fluffed it up, but never mind. Last week's games, well, second last round coming into the final series and Werribee Central's too good for the Tommy Tigers. Tyron Monty Bruno back in sensational form for the Werribee Central's footy club, kicking eight goals. Bell post hill, much too good for the Bannockburn Tigers with Justin Tarr and Joel Page kicking six goals. Some big forward power up there with the Panthers. And Inverleet, well, they were too good for Annika with Robbie Lowe kicking six goals. Certainly a big shootout for full forwards last weekend. Geelong West too good for Cry with Denham kicking five for the West Cheetahs. And North Geelong defeating Belmont Lions out at the Winter Resort with Paul Brigade, his second, sorry, third game back from a shocking injury, kicking 10 goals for the Magpies and the 94.7 match of the day. The Wintelsea Blues, too good for the East Geelong Eagles with Bander Clooster, apparently absolutely sensational on the ground. I don't know who the bloke was that said he probably won't play for the rest of the season. He might have had glasses and a round head with a moustache, but he certainly was playing last Saturday. Hello, I'm Dick Philpott, and once again, I've assembled some of the biggest names and brains in country football to eradicate, adjudicate, communicate, but definitely not procrastinate. The man from the Duck Pond who can tell me all about how good Tim Vanderclust was last weekend. Grubby Gays, it's going, mate. G'day, Dick, and g'day, viewers. And yes, he was good. I think Andrew Chalice will probably get the three votes from the umpires, but uh, <laughs> Vanderclust was very good, and so were Winch. And uh, you're all chipper this morning. You're up and about. You're ready for the big day. Oh. You've been waiting for this. For weeks and weeks, haven't oh, I have been waiting for it, actually. I do. I love the clash between two good sides. There's no doubt about it. This afternoon it'll be an absolute ripper. And the man who's well known for the cult segment, but our regular panellist this year in 2014, Alex Degardi. G'day, mate. G'day, Dick. I know I'm more of the Colts man, but even I'm excited You're about pumped? the Panthers for what looks to be an ongoing winning streak. Unbelievable. Let's have a look at the ladder before we go a bit any further. Now, we'll just get that up on the screen now. No prize for guessing. Bell Post still, still on top with that big clash this afternoon at the Keith Park Oval. North Geelong Magpies second, uh, you don't have to be rocket science to work it out. North Geelong win this, they get the week's rest. Bell Post still win it, they get the week's rest. Followed by Inverley East Geelong. Now they're pretty well cemented where they are, but the interest comes into Winchelsea and Werribee Centrals. Those two clubs can swap places in round 18, and it makes for a very exciting finish for the 2014 season. Followed by Bannockburn, Belmont Lions, Geelong West, Anarchy, Thompson and Karai. Probably those couple of clubs glad that the 2014 season is over. We'll take a look at the goal kicking and uh, no surprise there, Tom Malone Grant screamed out in front again. 76 goals, he's looking pretty good at the moment. Won't get his 100 for the season. Benny Boom will take no part in the finals of course. Followed by Dalton Grundell right down there to Tolton Jones for East Geelong on 39 goals. Now, it was a great game last week, the 94.7 match of the day, and Grubby caught up with the captain coach of the Winchelsea Blues, David Mensch. We're here with the victorious coach of the Winchelsea Footy Club, David Mensch. Mate, that was probably the biggest game of your season to date, and boy, did you just play well. Yeah, we uh, we had a massive lead up to the game, and it was a sort of grand final, and um, yeah, we did a bit of a breakfast this morning, and yeah, emphasised that uh, this was it, so um, yeah, I was really pleased the way the boys played, and uh, it was a full quarter effort, which I was happy with. Mate, you're probably going to have to do all that again next week, because again, it's like another final next week. Yeah, it's uh, the start of our finals pretty much this week, so yeah, we have to play up, come up against Inverlee. Um, the only thing I suppose they've got uh, third sewn up, so hopefully they'll take the foot off the pedal and um, yeah, we can uh, sneak into the five. Well, I don't know if they'll take the foot off the pedal, but I've got a funny feeling they may they may rest Hybens and a couple of those blokes to have a rest before the finals. But what you've already done, you've had a very, very hard year or hard run towards the end. To get in, you've had to beat sides above you. So if you do get in, that's obviously got to go well with your confidence. Yeah, we, like I said, we're going to take a lot of confidence out of today and it's probably the first time all year we've played four quarters against a quality team. So hopefully now we've got that belief that we can uh, we can do it and we can push some of those uh, top three teams. Someone told me Van der Kluister had a crook shoulder. That's got to be bulldust, doesn't it? Yeah, too many marks I think he took. I'm not sure how many he took today, but he was massive back there. We've missed him the last uh, couple of weeks. He's just our uh, general back there, so it's uh, great to have him back there. Yeah, well, only a couple of point loss at Belmont. I think Van der Kluister may have been the difference that day. But just looking in the, I think it was the third quarter, and I don't like to have a go at anybody, but a bloke got, did get sent off. Playing against 17, it was a crucial time. It really helped you, didn't it? The discipline wasn't there for him. Yeah, it was. Uh, that was a massive uh, quarter for us. It, uh, you know, we uh, put a few goals on when uh, when that guy went got sent off. So, fortunately, that's the way it goes, and that's footy. But um, yeah, we'll take that. So we're pretty happy with it. 
Well, mate, one more big week to go before the finals. I know you want yours to win. I'm not quite sure I do, because wherever you've got Belmont, they've got to beat them yet. But, look, absolutely fantastic performance from yourself and your side today. Good luck for next week, and good luck for the finals if you get there, mate. No worries. Thanks very much. And thanks, Grubby. Grubby will be back again next Saturday morning with an interview, no doubt, from one of the participants of the North Geelong Bell Post who going on this afternoon. <laughs> Wake up, Jeff. <laughs> You idiot, Grubby V. Diggin. Right, it's now time again for Thano's fabulous footy flashbacks. And we go right back 20 years ago to 1994. And guess what? It's the North Geelong Magpies against the Bell Post Hill Panthers. Both sides seem a little bit nervous and tentative as we see Bazier grab the ball, uses it well out of defence. Sucked away very nicely there by North Geelong defender. Picked up on a flying shot at the goal mouth here by Elzinger. Elzinger goes, bang, it's a goal! Pat Christensen does well, kicks the ball around his body and finds the big fella field who takes the mark short of half back. He stands the mark here in the first quarter. Field, awkward looking kick, but it's effective because Brady comes out and takes the mark in front of Marty Whitteson on the true centre wing position, grandstand side of the ground. Now, he lets go with a long one, does Brady. Up towards half forward, players raise. Who's up the base of the pack? The hair pass from Barbaro was a good one, but stolen there. Kick back towards, uh, well, centre wing, it's gone further than that. He's been bowled McCrowan, he couldn't hang on to the football. At the base of the pack, Hoskin comes out, he can't handle it. Play on off the call, now he's made the free kick. I think you're right there, uh, Ivan. Bell Post Hill were up and running, but the umpire had blown the whistle. Well, half forward making a snobby Hoskin. And it's Sean Hoskin wearing Craig E's number, a bit of a ploy there, I think, by the Lord John Meg Post, just to confuse the opposition. And the kick. Yeah, Hoskin goes towards half forward, up towards E's, who taps it over the back to Boothroyd, straightens up on the right ball and goes for goal, and Boothroyd put it right through the middle. Beautiful snap on his right. He moved the ball nicely on that occasion. Up they go. Paul Miller's a chance at the base of the pack and kicks away from him. In fact, that by big Stewie Hardiman, who's a grand player for the North Dillon Magpies. And uh, it's got out of bounds. And the Magpies just might have gone out of the full, I think you'll find. Oh, that's a shock. The kick. the kick wasn't good and Harbin did attack them. Uh, wouldn't have been a, a goal anyway. Harbin getting back between the goal and point though. Kicks there, picked up by Travail, who cleverly raised the pack. Glenn Travail lines up and goes for goal. Oh, he kicked him. What a great goal on the boundary line there. You'd know out here, Ivan. They're pretty hard to kick from there. Oh, Although there's a bit of a gap. You're running into the dead pocket, and uh, that was a great shot for goal by Glenn Cowell, and a family needed one for the fans. That is fabulous footy flashbacks. We'll be back again next Saturday morning. We're going to pay some bills now. We'll come back with the cult segment and also a very special guest back after this.